I'll play for the caddy. Ah, well, I'll do. I'll, I'll follow through, cause my heart belongs to daddy. <laughs> if, if I invite a boy some night to dine on my fine fin and hattie, look it up. I just adore. He's asking for more, but my heart belongs to daddy. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome once again to the Glittery Bunker in a big celebration of everything, Daddy. Oh, I've got so much to do today, so much to tell you. You've got so much to learn. So let's let the show begin. If you're stuck inside and you need some fun, she's the Grand Dame of Cagnet Dawn. With Victoria Sante. What do you do there, everyone? And welcome back. It's it's a big Father's Day celebration, and I'm excited. I'm not that excited, but I'm going to feign excitement because we're here, and I'm talking to you. It's so lovely to see you all gathering out there in the audience one by one. The numbers are going up. It's lovely. It really is. Well, as I said, today is a celebration of Father's Day, dear old dad, that's right now. Father's Day is a day that honors uh, fatherhood, paternal bonds, uh, uh, everything that influences fathers in our society. Now, you know, Father's Day wasn't always, uh, as we know it, you know, it, it, initially it was a day honoring St. Joseph. That's right. In the, in the Middle Ages, Father's Day was celebrated uh, for St. Joseph. And, 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 and religious uh, uh, faiths still do celebrate that day on March 19th, darling. That's right. But here in the state, we celebrate it on the third Sunday in June. Now, there's a reason for that. Uh, I don't know what it is, but we're going to look into the origins of Father's Day. Day. Now, you know, we, we celebrated Mother's Day what, just about a month ago, and Father's Day was a day that came to us in a reaction to Mother's Day. How about that? Mothers were first and fathers came later, and it's all because of a lovely lady named Sonora Smart Dodd. This Sonora Smart Dodd, doesn't she look smart in her little lace collar? She does, she does look smart. She looks like a bit of a dodd, if you ask me. She does, and her... Her first name, darling, you got that right. Her first name is Sonora. Now, her mother named her Sonora because as a baby, she was always sleeping and making a lot of noise. So they called her Sonora. <laughs> They didn't. No, they didn't. But she still was a lovely woman. And, and, and she was there when the first Mother's Day happened. And she said, well, that's not fair. I've got a lovely dad. I've got a dear old dad. And he's had a, a rough life. He has dad. He had to raise me and my siblings all by himself. He worked very hard. He toiled. He slaved. He, he, he was there uh, with Sonora back in Spokane, Washington. That's right. And look, at, look at the jaunty angle of that postcard there. Isn't it jaunty? Doesn't it make you just want to take a jaunt out to, to Seattle? Well, well, there there was Sonora's dad, William, and she wanted to honor him. And she, she brought William's name up to all the state and local officials. And, and eventually they granted her a special day uh, for, for William and for all fathers in the year 1910. That's right, it was 1910 when, when that first happened. And, 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 and Father's Day grew and spread. It spread like butter. It spread like cheese. It spread until the year, uh, it was uh, 1966, when President Johnson, there he is, good old President Johnson, established a presidential proclamation uh, naming Father's Day a, 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 as an, an official day. But it, it really wasn't, darlings, until 1972 when good old Richard Nixon, there he is, there he is signing into, signing into a, a law and establishing a permanent holiday just for dad. Isn't that lovely? There he is. Look at him. Don't look at him. Don't look at him anymore, darling. Who's out there in the audience today? I want to know. Uh, whatever's out there, I see Emma. I can't tell. It's going to be a beautiful day in the glittery park. You're right, Emma. You sure are. It's 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 a wonderful day. It's a big day, and in your big 
Big, big is better. Don't let anyone tell you that small is all right. Bigger is better. Every, everything about me is big. My glasses are big. My hair is big. I've got a big personality, and and and, and we're here to celebrate. We are now. Uh, let's let's get back to Father's Day, shall we? Let, let's now. You know, Father's Day is a day when father is the king, and and and. In, in the 1940s and 50s, he was always portrayed in advertising for Father's Day as the king. There he is, king for a day. Look at, look at, look at his family there. There's a mum with a big, I don't know what she has there. And, and there's probably a grown-up Jane and a, and, a, and, a, and, a, and a lovely dick there presenting father with a little gifty. And father looks like he's, I don't know if he's blowing a little party horn or smoking a, a, a long, a long cigarette. I don't know. But he's got a crown because he's king for a day. He is. And, and here's, here's another lovely ad. Look, there's father in his big, in his big chair, in his big red chair, in his, in his new PJs that, that mum and dad bought him. And look, you can see his family there. They're all like little angels on little clouds. Look at, look at mum there in the corner in a big long blue nightdress. And, and there's Dick kneeling and, and Jane's up in the sky. She's, holding on to a little, a little kite made out of the same fabric as dad. Isn't that lovely? Now, also, uh, it is a day that, that father's dads like to smoke pipes, but, but I don't encourage it. I don't. You, you smell like an old cherry wood break front. I don't know what you smell like, but don't do it. I don't think, I don't think dad likes that. Uh, we also assi uh, assimilate Father's Day with grilling. It's a day for dad to grill. That's right, Father. It's your big day. So we want you to go out in the yard and we want you to shape the meat of hooved mammals into little patties and grill them on the grill. That's right. That's what, that's what your day is for. Make us something to eat, Father. Make us something to eat. Uh, we also like to give Father um, something that he loves on Father's Day. Father's Day, the fathers love Old Spice. I don't know why they like Old Spice. Why don't they like New Spice? Now, Martha Stewart suggests you get New Spices every six months, but Dad's, Dad's like the Old Spice they always have and they always will. One thing that never changes is the age of spices. They're always old. Now, here's... Here's a lovely gift. A lovely. How about this, Daddy gift? It's 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 a product from Britain. It's called Dad's favorite sauce, or what? What they specifically call it over there is Dad's brown sauce. Dad's brown sauce. I don't know about that, but the, this is a product from 1904. It's 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 eaten a lot in in Great Britain and England and all around London. All the dads in London they can't get enough of their own brown sauce. And it's actually, it's not made there. They make it in Poland because the Polish people make a better brown sauce than the Brits do. They do, and they still manufacture it today. That's that's what it looks like. Daddy's favorite. You could you could pick some up at your favorite Amazon shop. You could. Now, you know what's in it? I'll tell you what's in it. It's got some malt vinegar, some syrup, which the label doesn't say what kind of syrup, but there's some syrup in there. There's There's molasses in there. Oh, molasses. Uh, there's the sugar, there's dates, and there's spices. Which brings me to the question, are they old spices or are they new spices? What kind of spices are in Daddy's brown sauce? I don't know. But I'll tell you the one gift that we all think about when we think about Father's Day is the tie, the nectar. Dads love neckties. And even if they don't, you're going to give them one. You've probably already made your purchase. But that's, it's, it's a good thing, the necktie. And it's it's rich in history, the necktie, yes. Now, um, the necktie was based on uh, the, this soldier here from Co Croatia. Uh, back in the 1600s, the Croatian soldiers wore, wore a little uniform that looks just like this one. And this is the first time we ever saw a little a little red thing around the neck. And everyone was was fascinated with that. They were. They were like, what are they cut on? What are the men wearing? That looks like maybe a girl should have it on. I'm kind of wearing a little tiny one today. You can't see it because it's underneath my little stones. There it is. But I, I, my, my tie is, is, is influenced by the Croatian tie, I believe. And, and it caught on. And finally, uh, King Louis XIV, there he is. He's wearing his little version of the, of, of the tie. He called it the cravat. Now, I'm not sure why he called it that, but that's what he called it. He was quite a one, Louis XIV, he was. But once he started wearing it, this little cravat, it, it became a craze. Everyone couldn't get enough 
cravats around their necks. They couldn't. And I don't, now, from, from the cravat, there came many, many kinds of ties. And we're going to look at some of them now we are. There's the, there's the necktie. We all know what one of those is. That's the kind we're going to get, Dad. I, I fancy the blue one with the stripes. The, the, yes, the stripes that go on the diagonal, darling. Everything should be on a diagonal, if you ask me. Here's, here's an example of an apron tie. That's called an apron necktie, which has a, a wide front a wider front than the, and a thinner back. Wide front, thinner back. Always remember that when you're shopping for a tie. Here is the ascot, darling. That's the ascot, which looks very Thurston Howell the third, if you ask me. And of course, there's the it's the bow tie. It's a lovely bow tie. That young man who's wearing it looks like he needs to take a little shave, doesn't he? But smart, he looks in the bow tie. Here's a fun tie. I don't know if you've seen one of these, darling. It's called a bolo. Yes, it's a bolo tie. You might you might want to see one of those in an old Western movie. Perhaps John Wayne had one around his neck, or maybe Clint Eastwood, if you like your Western 60s, 70s style. Here's a here's a cravat. Yes, that, that's what the cravat is. It's sort of like a combination of every tie I've shown you already. It is. It's sort of a bow. It's sort of an ascot. It's it's, it's sort of a pain to time. Not going to put one of those around me, not me. Here's a sailor tie. And this young lady fancies herself a sailor, and that's just all right by me. And here's a string tie. Now, I don't know. I think that this should be called a string tie, and this should be called a bowler, but what do I know? Everything, darling, I do. This is the kind of tie that I think Colonel Sanders from the chicken show wears. Now, if you're a young little one, perhaps you have a clip-on tie because you, you haven't figured out how to tie your shoes, let alone make a little bow. This is a, this next one is it's rather fancy tie. It is. It's called a kipper. Now, it's called a kipper, and the bottom of this gentleman's rather blandly uh, colored tie is, is, is five inches across. Five inches! Ties at the bottom should not be five inches. Don't wear a kipper tie. Please do it for me. Do it for Victoria. And here's a lovely tie. It's called a hunting tie. Now, we wear those if the, we're in Maine and we're going into the big hunting scene, chasing the fox around the plantation. That's right. That's the hunting tie. And, and here's a lovely tie. I don't know if I can get my hands on one of these, maybe in a joke shop. It's the laugh riot. It's the light up bow tie. It flashes on and off. And look at that. For $1.98, I could, I could buy several of those ties. I could. Let's see. Let's see who's in the bunker, shall we? I want to see you. Now I, know. I see Zach's there. Oh, hello, Michael. Nice to see you. Uh, Pauline says, that's right, Dad. We're hungry. Yes, you know we are. I know I am. Let's see who else is there. Uh, uh, Sherry Kelly. Hello, Sherry. I love you too. Uh, Zach says, don't touch Dad's sauce. That's right, Zach. It's brown. It's brown. Emma's there. Hello, Emma. Uh, uh, other Emma likes her ascot. Everyone likes an ascot. Gotta love an ascot. A nice big ascot, right, Zach? That's right. Here, uh, I love a good, a good ascot, a big ascot. Everyone loves an ascot. Michelle loves it. I'm so glad you're all here. Let's get back. Let's get back in, into the show. I'm going to take that picture off because um, I, I've got to take your little your little your little phrase off there too. It's 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 a rough life being me. It is. We get your comment off there. Uh, yeah, Zach, Zach also the bow tie of his choice is the light up tie. It is now you know I have someone waiting in the wings to tell us a little more about ties and how. How he ties one on. I'm talking about our good old friend, Mr. Dazzle. Let's bring him on, shall we? Mr. Dazzle, where are you? There you are. Hello. Hi, Mr. Dazzle. How are you today? I'm very well, thank you. Happy, happy Father's, Father's Day. Day. Well, ha happy Father's Day to you. Look at look at that gallery of ties you have behind you. It's a, it's, yes, it's yes. a I am know? I am a self-proclaimed grabologist, as it says. Uh, now, and a grabologist. Is that someone who grabs things? <laughs> uh, as long as those things are neckties, then yes. It's a right. necktie collector is called a grabologist. So I see. That's my title. I see. Uh, well, that Tell us a little bit about what you know about ties. Well, I, I actually spent quite a few years tying ties onto uh, other, well, onto mannequins, uh, not other people. But but uh, I, I know a lot of different kinds of knots and styles to choose from. And I thought maybe I'd show you a few of the things that I've learned in my many years as a grabologist. Uh, well, we want to learn them. 
Yes. So first things first, I have my collar button buttoned up and I'm going to pop my collar, which is totally acceptable right now. And it's totally 80s too, darling. <laughs> yes. Uh, so then I'm going to take, I took the flashiest tie I could <laughs> and I'm going to place it over. Now, when you, when you have a tie on either side and you're going to do a knot, the uh, thicker end, which is this guy here, it's on my right, he's going to be doing a lot of the looping and the knots, so you want that end to be a little bit longer, okay? Depending on the tie, you might have to fiddle with it, but for now, I have mine slightly longer than the other. Okay, so this is the half Windsor knot. It's one of the easiest ones to do. Um, it's one of the ones you see on mannequins and stores a lot of the time, and it goes like this. The long end, the right end, goes over the left. And then you wrap it under and through the middle, okay? Then you're going to bring it around in the front. And so you, you have it across your front here, so now you have that, that bar that you're used to seeing. It's gonna go back under the middle. And then, because we made that lovely bar, you can put the tip right through that hole. Well, and this is the half Windsor. It's very similar to a single Windsor. Oh. That would be a full Windsor. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Uh, the the difference is that if I can get this straightened. Sorry, in order to get the tie up to your neck, you have to pull the uh, thinner end in the back so that they're nice and even. There's my knot. Pull the, now, the thinner end. I'll remember that. I'm going to write yeah. that down. Take your notes. Um, the the difference between the uh, the half and the single is just that you you only go around one side for both, but you go around halfway for the half, and then on the single you go you wrap it all the way around once. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is a standard one you'd probably see people uh, wearing, but there are other knots to choose from, and one of the popular ones, especially among dads, if uh, your dad was alive in the eighties, is the double Windsor. Ah. I've chosen a slightly, oh, I've got it on backwards. <laughs> no, I, I always say the more Windsors, the better, Mr. Right? So everyone loves a couple of Windsors at a party. So. Right. so we have our long end on the right again, and it's just like the other. You cross over with the long end, and you come up through. Now we've just wrapped one side. So then we're going to the other side from behind, and we wrap it down through the middle. So now you can see each side has a wrap on it. Then we bring it around the front again. <laughs> Gonna run out of tie and back up through the middle. You can tell I don't do this one as often. And then we've made our bar so we can go right through the middle. Do, do, do. There we go. That is a thick double Windsor knot. Look at the size of that. <laughs> it's always best to have them nice and full and thick and long, isn't it? Right, well, yes, of course. You always want to show off how thick your knot can be. So there's our, our double Windsor there. <laughs> now, uh, if you if you did want to, here, I can pull this up. Uh, there are accessories you can use to, to hold these in place. Uh, you can use, for example, I have a tie clip here. This is a tie clip. It, uh, it's got a little mouth with teeth. And, and what you would use this for? for? So this, this is for, you stick it onto your tie and then you thread it through the back of your shirt where your buttons are and it keeps your tie in place. So that when you're bending over, say, or- So it doesn't over, go in your soup. <laughs> basically. It doesn't go anywhere, it stays there and it makes the tie stay straight. Um, another thing you can use, people have tie bars. I don't have one on hand. It's exactly the same, but it doesn't have any teeth. So that's if you want to, if you have a really delicate tie and you don't want it to, you know, I don't want to hurt silk, uh, you can use that. And you can also use a tie pin. I have a little enamel jukebox of the ghost pin here, and it's just like a normal pin. You stick that through the layers of your your tie and your uh, keep it in place there. So now we've covered some of the standard necktie knots. One of my favorites to do is the bow tie. Ah. Ah. Uh, the bow tie seems difficult, but I promise you it's not that hard. The only thing you have to be able to do is keep the bow tie shape in your head, all right? You want to make sure you know how to make that shape. So uh, most bow ties have, if I can find it on this one, ah, it has this little adjustable area, 
And so what you would do is you would take this portion here, this little notch, and you can actually adjust it to the size of your neck. Uh, every shirt has a standard collar size. So for example, I'm wearing a medium right now that's about 15 to 15 and a half. Um, I, I like to keep it around there. I can even go bigger too, because you can always make the knot tighter, okay? It's not too difficult to, to make a knot tighter. So you can, you can start with more length than you need. For the bow tie. So I'm gonna start once again, the right side longer than the left, okay? This is standard practice with all ties. Um, so we're crossing the right over the left and coming up through the middle. All ties, it seems, start with that <laughs> shoelace tie. So now this one is up in the air and it's the long one. So I'm just gonna rest that on my shoulder, okay? He's gonna sit there for a moment. Right here, we have the other end, okay? Which as you can see, has a sort of cut edge and then it has this rounded part. Mm -hmm. So the standard bow tie looks like this much. So we're gonna take that portion where, the, where it bubbles up and fold it in half to the front, okay? So now, we have the bow tie shape. It exists, we've seen it. We're going to take this long end that we put on our shoulder and pull it down across the front. So now we have this sort of bow tie shape with a long, there, our pendulum hanging out there. Now, I'm just gonna fold these forward. You can see where I pulled it down, there's a little hole where my thumb can go, see? So we're going to take this long end the bubble part of it, and we're gonna thread it through that hole, okay? So let me get my hands in order. Do, do, do. Oh, of course I can't, I lost my bows. <laughs> oh. I know, right? This will happen, it happens. Okay, I'm gonna start with my bow. See, I took too long explaining, that's my problem. <laughs> Let's go for it. Left on the shoulder, fold in half, put over the front, there's your refresher, okay. So then we're going to put it through the hole in the back. Do, 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 here it is. Now it's gonna look like a mess, okay? Be forewarned. This is the mess, okay? So what we have is we have this rounded knot in the front. Then we have two long flappy bits here that are flat and two rounded short bits. The rounded parts are the parts that make the knot tighter. So we're gonna slowly and gently pull those a little bit. Then we're gonna take the flattened bits, if I can find them. <laughs> oh, I'm looking in a mirror. And we're gonna pull those, okay? So, pull the loopy bits, pull the flat bits. Pull the loopy bits, pull the flat bits. And as you see, it looks more and more like a bow tie. So all you have to do from this point is make sure your little pockets are nice and zhuzhed get them there's one in the back here i know it there we are that looks lovely wow it's a bow tie so really the trick to the bow tie is just patience you know once once you get to the phase where you have your messy bow tie it's just a matter of gently gently pulling until it's exactly as tight as you want now some of you may think okay it looks a little uneven but here's the thing if it looked perfectly even then it would look like you bought it at a store pre-made. And you don't want that. You want it to be sort of crooked, all right? The tighter you get it, the more this knot is going to change shape, and that's okay. You want it to look slightly imperfect so that everyone around you knows you tied that bow tie yourself. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's just lovely. Thank you so much, Mr. Dazzle, for giving us that lovely explanation and demonstration on how to tie one on. Well, thank you very much. I'm glad I got to do this twice. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you again, Mr. Dazzle. Oh, happy, happy Father's Day. Day. Take care, everyone. Oh, that was just lovely. Well, we'll be back with a little more of the show in just a moment. <laughs>
It's Pantachino Summer 2020, featuring Pantachino Podcasts, mini musicals broadcast everywhere. Pantachino Curbside, bringing musical theater to your front door. Victoria Sautés, Let's Learn Stuff. All this and more in Pantachino Summer 2020. Find out all the details at pantachino.com. All right, friends, let's get crafty, shall we? Here's what you're going to need for this lovely Father's Day uh, craft. You're going to need a, a roll. This is from a paper towel there, but I'm going to trim mine down to a little, a little about halfway through. You're going to need a photograph. You're going to need a, a skizzer. You're going to need some glue stick, uh, and I think that's all you need. So it's, like I said, I've, I've trimmed my little uh, paper towel uh, center down to about halfway, and I'm going to make two little clips in the middle there. One. And two, just, just, I just made, can you see the little clip that I just did there? Yes, that's right. Just a little clip on the side. And then I've taken a photograph. This is a photograph of, I don't know who, but this could be you or your little daughter there. And I've, I've taken it and I've trimmed my, my little picture with very difficult with these little fingers, I'm telling you, but I trimmed it just right down to it. And look at how it fits right there on the uh, paper towel roll. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my little glue stick and I'm going to rub the back of that little girl all and get her all gluey. I've always wanted to do that and get gluey, but this way you don't really get your fingers gluey, just the back of the little girl. And I'm going to place it there so that her hands are just about where those little two snips are. Do you see? There she is, Look, look at her there. That could be you or, 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 or any loved one. Remember, this is going to be for father. So make sure your little picture is of someone who likes father or someone who father likes. And then I've taken a little piece of cardboard here and I've just written down, I'm writing down a little sentiment on that. I am. And now I'm, I, look, I am now Jane loves dad. Let's, let's say this little girl is Jane, shall we? And then we're gonna stick this little sentiment right there in the clip so that you could put this on dad's nightstand when he wakes up or maybe you could put this on um, on his place setting so in the morning when he eats his eggs he could take a look at that or you could that little thing could say anything or maybe it could be a little little photograph of a father there's father and we'll I'll just put that right in there and it looks like the little girl is holding up the photograph is that a lovely little craft quite simple uh it won't cost you nothing i think you probably have everything you need right there in your little craft drawing your little end table and i think that was just a lot i think i'm gonna make one of these for me with a picture of me holding up a, a maybe a picture of me i don't know all right darling it's father's day and i i want to talk about a few uh special fathers through the years uh they, they 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 are the fathers that we grew up with not our own father darling but the fathers of television that's right let's have a look at some of the most famous tv fathers shall we here we have oh who knows who that is that's right you know who that is that's ward cleaver there in the bottom corner there with, right next to barbara billingsley and his Leave it to Beaver family. There's Beaver and Wally. And do you know Hugh Beaumont was the actor who played father? He played Ward Cleaver. And he, he became an ordained minister. He did. He was more than an actor. He was holy. He was. Who do we have here? Oh, yes. That's Steve Douglas, the, the tall strapping man there with his three sons. He was the dad on my three sons. Fred McMurray, his name is, yes, ah, he was a lovely father, he was, he sort of always sort of gobbled his words a little bit and stuttered, he smoked a pipe, he wore one sock lower than the other, he, my three sons, what a lovely show, now, we can't talk about Father's Day without father knowing best, there's, there's Robert Young with all his little family all around him, what a, what a lovely TV show that was, early television we're into, and here's, um, Andy Taylor, that's right, that's that's Andy Griffith who played Andy Taylor. I wonder why they named him Andy. Maybe just so that it would be easier for him to remember his own character's name. They lived out in Mayberry, a little country town, just on the other side of, um, uh, what was it? Uh, uh, I don't know, where North Carolina was it? Where, uh, where, where they were? And then Mount Pilot, they always talked about going to Mount Pilot to go to the shops and the stores. And he lived, of course, with his Aunt B, the lovely and, 
and, and sort of overprotective Francis Bavier. And their son, of course, was little, a little, a little teeny tiny Ron Howard. Opie, Opie Taylor. He was a love, wasn't he? And and his name was Opie. And we wonder why why Andy and, and B named this little boy Opie. Opie is actually a shortened version of a, of a Nordic name. So perhaps perhaps Opie was a was a was a descendant of the Vikings. I don't know if he was. Uh, uh, rumor has it that Andy, uh, when he was a young boy, his best friend was another little boy named Opie, and perhaps that's why they they called him Opie. Of course. Ron Howard grew up to be an actor we all know from other television shows and, and a very famous movie director he is. But we also know him as, as the young man in another show with another famous father. There, look at that. There he is in the bottom right-hand corner on Happy Days. And, of course, Mr. Cunningham, Howard Cunningham, was played by, by um, oh, dear, what's his name? I have to look at the screen. But Tom Bosley, of course. Oh, could I? I forget Tom Bosley. We can't celebrate Father without talking about Herman Munster. There's Mr. Fred Gwynn, probably the tallest TV father we ever had. And and and, and this show had not one father but two because there, there's there's Herman's father. There's uh, there's Grandpa there. Yes, look at him. There he is. Al Lewis is the grandfather. Now here's another famous TV dad. That's um, Tom Corbett. Is the character's name on the courtship? of Eddie's father, Mr. Mr. Bill Bixby, of course, and his little, little boy, Brandon Cruz. I wonder whatever happened to him. The Courtship of Eddie's Father, a TV show, uh, short-lived, but from the, from the 1960s and, and a follow-up to the movie of the exact same title. Now, I know, I know Emma's going to be very excited about our next TV dad. It's Mike Brady, yes, Mr. Robert Brady, father of the Brady Bunch. You have to talk about him because he was a lovely person. That's right. And did you know that he made his first TV appearance on Father Knows Best? How about that? <laughs> now, uh, of course, here's, here's, here's Mr. Evans. That's right. From, um, from the Good Times show, of course. It's lovely family. They always had so much fun. And, and, and oh, look at that. That's Ken Berry from the, the sequel to the Andy Griffith show, uh, Andy had had enough time on the show and, and they sort of retooled the Andy Griffith show. All the characters were there, except we now followed um, we now followed Sam on Mayberry RFD. And here's a show that was with lots of dads. Look at those Jesse and Danny and Joey on the Full House show. All those lovely fathers. Well, what a, what a day, what a show. Uh, I don't know about you, darling, but... I don't think we could go on this show another moment without playing a round of the match game. That's right, it's the match game. It's Thursday. I know you love to play it more than that. I love to play it, darling, I do. So um, we're going to start with our first one. It's just me in the studio today. So remember, you have to try to match what I'm going to say, not what you think, but what you think I'm going to say and and I can be I can be quite a one to match, but if you do, you you might win one of our little pins here. You might win a little bag. Look at look at today's present. And look at that. We have a Pantuccino bag so that when you do your little groceryal items, you can carry this along. And people will say, "Where'd you get that fetching bag from?" All right, let's get started with the with the show. All right, here uh, here's our first little clue. Mother gave Jane one dollar to buy a Father's Day gift. So Jane got him blank. Mother gave Jane one dollar to buy a Father's Day gift. So Jane gave him blank. Let's see. I'm writing my answer down. I've got mine in there. I'll look at the comments now and see who's got a... A bag of neckties. She gave him one dollar, but a bag of neckties. Emma, Emma, you're on the right track. She gave him nothing. <laughs> Fifty cents worth of candy. I'm sure that Mrs. Sean said that she could keep the rest herself. Uh, something she already had. That's a very good answer. Nada. <laughs> uh, you got, 
you folks out there, you you really know Jane, don't you? You really, you really, you really got her pegged. All right, I'm going to show you um what I wrote down, which is close but no cigar. Here's what I wrote. I wrote a lottery ticket. She said one dollar. What else could she get him? A lottery ticket. I suppose that's a lovely thing. No match on the first round. I'm sorry to say, but I've got another. Got another little round here to go. All right. Here's the next one. Are you ready? All right. Dick, Dick the character, Jane's brother. Dick surprised Dad on Father's Day by serving him blank in bed. Dick surprised his dad on Father's Day by serving him blank in bed. I can't wait to see what your little twisted minds have come up with, darling. <laughs> Spaghetti and hot dogs. Emma, that made an impression on you, didn't it, love? It did. Have you tracked it yet, I wonder? Jane's Breakfast. Do you know, Sean, Jane's Breakfast was the name of my very first band when I was in middle school. It was soup, <laughs> dogs and spaghetti, cookies and milk, ice cream. These are all just lovely. Peanut butter. <laughs> so we get stuck in bed. I still like I like Jane's breakfast. I do like that. I think that might be my favorite answer, but I don't see anyone matching today. I'm going to stop the music for a moment. No, I said stop. Stop the music. I'm, I, I said that the dad surprised Dick serving him drinks in bed. Drinks in bed. You know, father, fathers in those periods, they always liked their drinks, didn't they? Like wake up in the morning and have a nice little screwdriver or a... What's the one that you drink in the morning? I don't drink in the morning. A, a Bloody Mary. That's right. All right. Don't, don't fret, darling. Someone still might win this day. I've got another clue here. This would be a real easy one. I want you to think fast on this one, darling. Uh, here's the next one. I'll, I'll, I'll actually stop the music for you. Father Blank. Father Blank. Ooh, there's a, a, so many of them. I always get into the music, don't I? Why? Why do I do that? It's like an earworm, this music. Um, uh, the time! Uh, the time! Father of the Bride! Oh, Judy, that's a good one! That's a good one! Father Christmas! Who else has a father? Nose best! Yes! Father Este. Father Este? Sunday, Father? Am I getting that wrong? Am I temporarily insane? Father 5J? You know, I don't have good vision on it, Father. Mike Brady? Father Mike Brady, why not? Father of oh, Father's Day. I see it. I see it. I see it. Oh, the music came back. Like a bad penny. Uh, uh, <laughs> Father's brown sauce. Oh, I think Father Brown sauce might be the definitive answer on that. But um, I, I went with, I went with, uh, Michael, I, I said Father Christmas. Michael. Michael, we're on the same wavelength that went thinking of Christmas. Well, well, Michael, you've already gotten my pin, so I'm going to have to send you the, uh, the Pantuccino bag this time. But don't fret, lovies. Let's see if someone else will win. This is my final clue. My table's empty after this. Uh, Daddy blank. Daddy blank. Who got this one? I wonder out loud. I'm going to write mine down. Daddy Mark Brady again. <laughs> Daddy Sauce. Yeah. Daddy Sauce. Daddy Daddy Warbucks. 
Daddy daycare. Oh, that's Daddy long legs. Daddy kins. Daddy kins. That's cute. That's cute, Daddy kins. Any last stragglers in there before we, we close it down? We have, another, we have another daddy long legs. That's two daddy long legs. Well, I'm going to tell you what I wrote down. I'm going to get my little music out of there. There we go. So I also wrote down daddy long legs. And um, Judy, where's Judy's little thing? Judy, you were the first person to, to match me, so you get the prize. I'm going to send you. I'm going to send you a little button or a magnet. I am. Judy, would you please email us at Pantachino? Pantachino at gmail.com with your little address and I'll send you a little trinket right quick I will well it's been so much fun having you on the show today seeing you all I, 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 I love having you all here now I, I have a big favor for you for Tuesday shows when I'll be back I want you to wear something pink wear something pink and if you'd like to send me a picture of you in the pink Send it along over the weekend, and and I, I, I might feature your picture on the show if you're if you're pink enough. Now, while you're pinking yourselves out over the weekend, enjoy the sun and the frolic. Uh, be good to your father. Wash your hands all the time, darling. Every time you come in or out, you got to wash those little hands. Put your little face covering on. This thing's not going to go away until everybody puts their little masks on. I know it's hot. I know it's uncomfortable, but do it. Do it for the sake of everyone, love, so we can get through this. And, and of course, as I always say, be kind to each other. Be kind to each other. I'm going to miss you. Have a lovely weekend, darlings. Bye-bye. If you're stuck inside and you need some fun, she's the Grand Dame of Cagnet Dawn. Victoria Sante! Yay! I'm still here trying to figure out how to turn this off. Nope. Nope.